Newtown is just, it's a different kind of place. It's a wonderful community. It's a total melting pot, full of quirky characters, people of different backgrounds, different political and religious persuasions. It's one of the oldest suburbs in Wellington, so it's got a lot of history. And different cultures and communities have lived here at different times. Newtown has always been a good place. My parents have always lived here. It was kind of a little bit rough, but it was still a, a great place to grow up. And there wasn't a lot there for the kids and, and people to do, so we sort of just made our own fun. Yeah, Newtown was sort of the, the, the central spot for us, um, especially the flats. Like we used to play cricket at the flats and um, there was a wash house and sometimes we'll hit the ball in the wash house and we'd run and get the ball and then we'll see curve, you know, painting a wall. In those days it was a working class neighbourhood and it was one of the first stop off points for new immigrants to, to the city. So it had that sort of reputation as really multicultural from the start. And usually what happens is people come here, they start off um, maybe living in the council flats, but then they branch out and their family spreads and they end up living in different areas or buying houses and stuff like that. So it's an important area for giving people a chance. A lot of uh, families um, that migrated from like the islands and stuff, they all lived in the flats too. You know, my mum and dad always wanted to raise us here. We were the second family to move into Tiaro Flats. I lived here right up until the 2000s. Um, my parents kept going right up until my mum and dad passed, both passed away. Um, I think we're the longest serving family in these flats here. Everybody knew who my mum and dad were. They used to have the photos at their picture on the wall here as well. We've had a mural on the side of Newtown Hall that was painted by Curb a long time ago. It was really beautiful. Um, and then one day we didn't know it was happening, but unfortunately the council had to paint over it because the wall was cracked. There was already kind of trauma around the fact that the, the, the mural that was on it had been taken off. And we got phone calls from people that I had no idea cared about the mural saying, this has been a tragedy, the mural's been painted out, help. I got several texts around, oh my God, the mural's gone. <laughs> it's like, okay, it's been there for over 10 years now. The storytelling on the walls becomes everybody's story. That was quite revolutionary because you, you didn't see many murals around Wellington with, with our people. Because a lot of times, like city council there and stuff, well, from what I've seen, they'll just put trees and see goes. But when you get curved to, to do work, he puts the community in, in there and then he adds that hip hop, you know, to the flavour. So we were really disappointed when we got the phone call saying that the mural had been painted over. So we made sure that we got in touch with Curb and Specs as soon as possible to see if they could do another one. Um, so we were super stoked that they were excited to do a new one. We had already always wanted to redo it because most murals, they just don't last forever. Maybe 10, 15 years max, they need to be redone. I wasn't expecting to feel emotional about this piece, but there's a lot of feeling in it and there's a lot of um, connection to that space, but also a lot of connection to Curb and a lot of connection to his whanau that all grew up in the area. I sort of had these memories of the area because I pretty much grew up on that corner. Once I started checking online, I started finding images and photos from the area. And, I, and then I got inspired by that because I was like, yes, this is it. This is the, the park, this is the, um, the church, this is the, um, these are the kids from the neighborhood, you know. I was born in 1972, and some of the images that I was using were from 74 and onwards. So um, I was um, a toddler then, but my brother, he's older, he would remember more. Growing up in Newtown, was, it, was, it was fun because so there was a lot of empty, shells of buildings here and we used to play in them you know like rocks throwing rocks and making having war games and things like that um, it was known as the rough area of wellington just because i think you know without sounding cliche you know the islanders and the maoris mostly lived here and we used to build like three-story forts like what, you, what he's painting on the wall here 
and your little group had that fort and then another little group with that fort would have rock fights and spears and you know you couldn't go in their fort they couldn't come in our fort and after a while the whole area was just full up with like this makeshift fort and that was our playground it was really dangerous you know there was no osh there was no safety it was just straight kids having fun okay well that's the history so i wanted to kind of transition into the positive direction for the future. So I came up with the image of the young girl with the butterfly to represent all the kids that live in the, the, the flats right now, but also represent a, a more sustainable and environmentally friendly future that hopefully the kids will have when maybe we're gone. The most awesome thing to me is just seeing the kids that live there now and how they've really connected with not only the wall and the space and the design but also just taking ownership of the whole I mean I, it's their space and it just reminds me that that was Curb and his friends and his Fano of those times who just took ownership of that space exactly the same kids different times yeah, we're talking with Specs, and we're telling her that we we have no, we needed a pool near to Idaho Flats. She came with this plan for this um, water park in the lot across the road from Newtown Hall. When it's summer, right, uh, it's like gets very hot, and uh, people and people don't get to go to the pools or beach because it's too far to walk. Yeah. And, and you have to pay a lot. One of us had a, a good idea of doing a, a water park. Splash Planet. Yeah, and so we all agreed with Splash Planet, that just across the road over there. Yeah, they pointed to the empty space, and to be quite honest, that space has been empty for a, a long time. A long time. Longer than those kids, some of those kids have been born. So I was just like, they look over there and they have these like fantasies of a pool and this is what we'd have and we're gonna have this long slide. So I made um, a cafe, it's really nice, anyone is welcome. The kids around here, they know what they need and they know how to get it and they're strong and they're resourceful. They want sustainability, these kids want to live on a planet that can survive and they want to live in a new town that is thriving and yeah I think they're gonna make it happen. We're just very lucky to have them in our community. Herb and Sarah are a um, strong positive force in the community supporting young people. Hip-hop's a really good tool. They were sort of my first introduction to like the hip-hop culture. Kerb and I and several other people have run youth workshops yeah, for a number of years where we ran like the four elements and kids got the opportunity to get involved at a participatory level but then they started recording and we got mentors in that were like at the top of their game. Like we call them hip hop, like they're like our OGs. Um, you know, like unsung heroes, you know, they're not necessarily in the mainstream, but um, Curb, Specs, they've always been Newtown hard. As things change and Newtown changes, you know, we still need to acknowledge the history and the people that they dedicated a lot of their lives and their childhood to the neighbourhood. I go by the name of Curb One, born and raised in Newtown, 49 years of age and I'm a graffiti artist. <laughs>